Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about collisions. I mean, not that kind of collisions, but name collisions. We will learn what's that and some tips to fix them. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift Tips. Before talking about name collisions, we need to be clear about one very important concept, name spacing. If you are coming from Java or C Sharp, namespaces are super common there, but I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of Swift developers that they didn't even know that namespaces also exist in Swift. Ok, but what is a namespace? A namespace is a region in your project to group types, functions and constants in a single unit, that in Swift is called module. This provides great benefits like organizing your code well, encapsulation and preventing name collisions with other elements outside a model. Unlike other languages, Swift namespacing is implicit inside the model. This model is represented by the target of your application, a framework or a testing bundle. Fun fact, you might remember NS or UI prefixes like NSString or UIViewController. That comes from Objective-C, which doesn't support namespaces. Apple created those prefixes on their APIs to avoid name collisions and make distinction between its APIs and your custom types. Swift so will try to figure out where are the calls of a type or function coming from. Take a look to the following example. We have created a regular string hello, but also we created a custom string type. The question is, is there any problem here? Actually no, Swift is perfectly compiling and figuring out the types even when we are declaring our own string type. This is because Swift first review the local declarations and then the important models. If there is the same type or function name in the local scope and in the models, Swift will give priority to the local scope. In this example, hello was declared as a string from the standard library, but new string declared has a string that was created in this scope. What would happen if I assign hello to new string? This is really interesting. Swift is detecting already that both the string types are different. One coming from the standard library declared as Swift and the other from this playground. Now, what happens if I want to create one string with type from the standard library and not my own? In this case, you have to use the full expression of the type that includes the model name. This is actually one of the ways to avoid ambiguity and name collisions, adding the model name followed by a dot. In this way, Swift will compile without any issue. In this case, page contents is the name of this model and is redundant here because the default string is the one I created earlier and you can omit it. That's cool, but there are other situations in which Swift is not capable to resolve the puzzle due to ambiguity. Let's see those scenarios. We are in this class, walk in the park, with some calls to animal framework. Let's jump inside the framework. Animal has these three functions, move, run and sleep, which are being invoked in our main project. Let's go back to walk in the park. It turns out that we have another framework called human. Let's import it here. Oops, we got a lot of errors. Swift cannot resolve the calls to ambiguity. Can you guess why? Let's go to human framework. It turns out that human framework contains the same function declarations like animal. This is producing a name collision. We will fix them with some alternatives. We already saw that you can call directly the model before the function. Let's try that. That works, but we can do something cool with the importing. Instead of importing the whole model, we can specify a piece of the model. 
even a single variable or function. Let's see that. Voila, with this type of importing, we are just adding specific components of the model. And even when there are two names for the same function, we can isolate the calls for specific frameworks. We can do the same for struct, classes, enum, etc. We will talk more about import in a later video. Now let's imagine that instead of global functions, we have two types with the same name in two different frameworks. How can we fix that? Here, we can use a type alias to rename the types. There you go, type alias is also a great tool to fix name collisions. Lastly, you can even wrap your types in a more descriptive container struct, enum, or class. This not only fixed the name collision, it also improved the readability and clarified the scope of each function. Do you know any other alternative to fix name collisions? Please share it in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more, check out this playlist here with more content about Swift. That's all for me, everyone. Thank you so much and have a great day. Hey, are you still here? I just finished the recording of this video. I want to say thank you to Cole Dano, which gave me the idea for this video and remember that if you want to learn something about any specific topic please leave it in the comments down below and also I wanted to share it with you that I'm learning clean code I mean I've been studying this book in pieces but it's the first time I want to take opportunity to read it entirely so it's an opinionated book but there are great knowledge here so if you haven't read it yet I strongly recommend you.